começar! Well, welcome to another episode of the Justice Plan TV and podcast show, where we bring you fascinating stories and insights to help you make your wedding day truly unforgettable. Now, I'm your host and professional wedding MC Nathan Kassar, and today we have a special guest who's all about creating authentic and engaging ceremonies, Megan Brummer, also known as Sydney Celebrant Services. Now, Megan isn't your ordinary celebrant. She's a yoga and meditation teacher, an internationally published writer, and a marriage celebrant who infuses every ceremony with the magic of storytelling. The couples adore her for her delivering ceremonies that are genuine, heartfelt, and devoid of any fluff. But that's not all there is to Megan. Did you know that she grew up on a sugarcane farm in Zimbabwe? I certainly didn't. That's amazing. Uh, with degrees in psychology and drama, she's embarked on a journey of self-discovery, traveling the world solo before settling in Australia. She's lived in India, became a yoga teacher, and even started her career as a funeral celebrant. Talk about a fascinating journey. Now, in addition to her professional pursuits, Megan has some exciting hobbies. She and her family enjoy snorkeling in Balmoral, where they've made headlines for returning lost wedding rings and even a $20,000 Cartier watch. Megan's zest for life extends to her love for meditation, singing in Sanskrit, and her passion for me making a meaningful difference. Today, Megan joins us to share her wealth of knowledge on wedding ceremonies. We'll explore her five mistakes couples should avoid making at their wedding ceremony, ensuring that your special day goes off without a hitch. Plus, Megan will also provide five invaluable tips for crafting unforgettable wedding vows, helping you express your love in the most meaningful way possible. So if you're ready to elevate your wedding ceremony to new heights and learn from the wisdom of a true celebrant extraordinaire, you're in for a treat. Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nathan. Lovely to be here. Yes, it's great to have you here. I I was in, I, and I was impressed by a plethora of your or your um, your life achievements and everything else in between. But one in particular that struck out at me actually was your love of singing in Sanskrit because that's an ancient language. And man, there are many people around who there's oh, sorry I should say there's not many people around who can actually do that that language in the first place. It's usually a language that's passed down uh, generationally, and so. What is what inspired you to to learn that? Well, I was when I was traveling the world for a year when I was twenty five years old. I just left London. I lived there for two years. I was really sick of waking up every morning, getting dressed in black, getting on the underground, working in an office. So I decided, no, there's got to be more to life than this. So I packed my bags. I saved up for a one year ticket around the world, and I headed straight to India. Well, I did stop off at a few countries along the way, but India was the place I really wanted to go. And when I got there and heard this beautiful singing in the temple, something happened inside me. I really just fell in love with it. And I felt so incredibly calm and so peaceful. And yeah. then I came across this organization called the Art of Living Foundation. Um, and I started doing their programs, you know, the happiness course, meditation courses. And they include these sessions in the work that they do, where you go along to a big hall or somebody's home and everybody's sitting with their eyes closed singing in Sanskrit. Mm. And I've just ne never stopped doing that. I started learning guitar and now I actually lead those sessions, even though there's mostly Indians in the room and I'm usually the only, you know, non-Indian um, leading it. <laughs> But I, I always tell my Indian friends I'm more Indian than they'll ever be. It's just we have different skin color. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I uh, I I have a Shawani that I I'm very proud of, and I like I I'm, I had it specially tailored uh, from in somewhere in, in Liverpool, New South Wales, uh, where there's a major hub, as you know, of uh, of, of an Indian culture there and uh, the community. And every time I go to one of the weddings, um, <coughs> excuse me, when I go to one of the weddings that I'm hosting there uh in that in that outfit it's amazing where i basically have the same experience as you do where they're like hang on like the particularly the, the younger generations they're mostly wearing western outfits now and all the guys will come over to me and they're like oh you make it me you know my auntie's now getting upset that i didn't wear mine and i'm like <laughs> like in a fun way, of 
was. And I'm like, yeah, you know, what can I do? So, uh, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it, you're right. It's such a, it's a beautiful language and a beautiful culture. And I can, I can, I can mm, absolutely really see is. why you would have been entranced by it. So what a, what a wonderful totally. skill to have alongside all, you know, you finding lost treasure and being a yoga instructor. Have you ever considered combining yoga into your ceremonies? Well, I actually have been coming up with some packages recently where I'm incorporating doing yoga with my couples, whether it's in person or online, and maybe even offering, you know, the wedding party before the wedding, let's all jump on Zoom because we're all in different parts of the country. Um, and let's just have a session where we're really just relaxing and taking time out for ourselves. And maybe as an after, you know, after the party, the mm. morning after. Let's just come it's together. It's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, and I, relax. I, I, yeah, I think yeah, relax is a good way to put it, especially after all the drinking and the socializing. But yeah, that's uh, yes, exactly. that's oh, that'd be fantastic. I, I, I'm just immediately remember, like you know, those like the, the goat yoga and things like that, like all these these amazing <laughs> yes. like extra little things in the, in the yoga world that are coming out recently. And I can just imagine like you know you being on the news for for you know um, after they've done their vows and okay now into the dagwood dog or whatever it's called uh, the downward dog. What is a downward dog? That's a <laughs> food. Oh wow, jeez. Anyway, sorry any uh, any <laughs> yoga enthusiasts out there? I didn't mean that. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of mistakes, um, you have an incredible five list, uh, five point plan about what to avoid uh, the kind of mistakes at the wedding ceremony. So I'd love to hear for this because obviously, I, you know, you and I both, you know, mm. uh, we love to never make a mistake. That is the, the, the being in the wedding industry is kind of like that. You have to, one of your thing is that you're a perfectionist and you never like to make mistakes because the one day you can only ever do. And so uh, what, what can couples do to avoid making mistakes as well? Oh, so many things. So the first one I would say is for those people planning an outdoor wedding. And, you know, most of my weddings, uh, many of my weddings are outdoors because we've got so many beautiful spots in Sydney, right? Mm. If you're having an outdoor wedding, make sure you have a really great indoor backup. Now, and I find that a lot of couples think, okay, if it's raining, we'll be indoors. And if it's not raining, we'll be outside. But you have to think of other things as well, like, are they going to be if there's going to be really strong winds, none of your guests are going to thank you for that. You know? <laughs> um, and, and also the other thing is that the backup venue should not just be um, sheltered. It should also be gorgeous. You know, so if your wedding has to transfer to in, indoors, you want to be able to feel really confident and happy that it's just as good an option. It's not just like, you know, the backup in case, which we may not need because you may actually, need to go with that option so make sure it's beautiful okay yes absolutely i i yeah there's there's definitely been some moments where i tried a couple recently who had a great backup plan because they were they really wanted to get married on the beach and thankfully you know long story short is that they actually did get to do it and they recently featured in the sunday telegraph actually it was it was a beautiful day uh, but you know their their venue also was immediately able to accommodate a you know a where the plan and I think it was important to 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 have that in place and it wasn't just like oh hey Nathan like two days from the wedding actually uh if it rains we're going to be here it was I was told that you know months back that that had already been established that they'd already had that in place they had the logistics set up they'd already told their transport they told everybody that needed to know all the guests had even been told on their invitations and all that and so it was definitely a robust plan that meant that they could activate it at a moment's notice and there was no confusion right. on the day of course there would have been a bit of a i don't know a bit of a sore feeling that you didn't get to do it at your dream spot but you know you're still getting married you still had a plan and it was almost relatively seamless what else can you tell us about what other mistakes can I add to that one before we move on? Please. Uh, something I'd say also really important when you're thinking of that backup venue is make sure the if you're if you are using that backup venue, make sure your ceremony is starting at exactly the same time mm -hmm. as it would be starting if you were outside. So I once had a couple who were like, you know, um, our backup venue is done at your know, public dining room at the moral. Um, if we're using that option, it's only going to be available an hour later. I'm like, now you've got to check if all your vendors are still available. Mm. You've, you may have guests who are literally coming, you know, for a set amount of time and they have to get to something else. That's not going to be the case with, 
you know, in many weddings, but it may be you, people allocate a certain amount of time per event. Yeah, so, true. Especially with your vendors, make sure that it's the same time so that everybody's still on the, exactly the same schedule. Or yeah, no, if you can't do point. that, mm. and, it, and if you can't do that, if the backup venue just has to start an hour later, book all your vendors for an extra hour. Book and pay all your vendors to be available for an extra hour. Don't assume that your vendors have um, have got the whole day booked just for you. Mm. Yeah, certain, definitely certain people. Yeah, I mean, even I know that certain celebrants I've mentioned uh, when they're I've, I've seeing them at like say two o'clock for a two two to three three o'clock ceremony, and they're like, okay, I'm off, and I'm like, where are you going? Like, I've got another wedding. I'm like, okay, bye. And Next I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> thank goodness, like the 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 whole ceremony was exactly on time and everything. And so, yes, um, I mean, I, I normally, you know, maybe I, m most of the time I'm doing one wedding a day. Sometimes I'm doing two. Very occasionally I am doing three. It's not, it's not common. It only happens if the weddings are extremely close. Like, you know, if I've got Mosman, Manly, Seaforth. Um, and if there's a, a lot day, of time between each day. wedding. I, I tell you what, I, by, that, by that last wedding, I was like, come on, Megs, you've got this. Keep your energy high. Oh, I meant, I meant as in of the locations you were going to i mean what a what a terrible awful like oh manly and the moss oh, <laughs> like, oh, no, i thought you meant i thought you meant oh god how can you do three a day no like, no, oh, no, no, like no 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 i'm a work like, like yourself but like no like like oh no i'm gonna you know where are you off to next oh you know just double bay i'll see you later oh, no. i'll slum it i'm sorry like <laughs> oh i've got to go to catalina and rose bay what a ghastly life <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it is it is a blessing in this industry, um, you know, that we, we do get to go to some really lovely places because, you know, couples obviously pick such just great spots. So it is it, trust me, speaking to all of you out there that are listening, you know, we we do love the opportunity to go to these places. So thank you for having your weddings in, in beautiful locations. Is there anything else that sticks yes, out? We do um, love our work. Um yeah, yeah. I would say the other thing that I'd like to speak about around mistakes to avoid is if you are having a midday summer wedding, like say you're planning on starting your wedding at 12 o'clock or 12.30 or 1 o'clock or even any time from 11 onwards, mm. and you're looking at the summer months, it is going to be hot, right? Mm. And I have been to so many outdoor weddings that are happening in that midday section where there's no shade for the guests not just for the guests or for anyone, but it's your guests who get there early. It's your guests who mm. are waiting in the sun for, you know, half an hour, sometimes up to an hour for the enthusiastic guests. They, are, they tend to arrive a bit earlier, don't they? And then, yeah. then there's your ceremony. So by the time you arrive as the couple, they, they've had enough of being there in that sun. They're cooking. And some of the yeah. men will be in long sleeve tops at the very least, you know, or even jackets. And if there's no shade options, then that's, they're just so uncomfortable. So it's, I would say if you're planning an outside midday summer wedding, make sure you have shade options. Provide shade for your guests and provide water at the very least. Make sure they kept cool. Yeah, absolutely. There's a number of venues that I work at that have exclusively outside venues. Um, I'm returning back to one this weekend, in fact. And one thing that they often do for the venue's sake is that they will provide water. Obviously, it's part of the package and the contract. And everything else like mm -hmm. that. But the fact is, is that there was an active decision when they were processing, the couple were processing which venues to go to, that they knew, okay, well, we want an outside wedding. Fantastic. Well, we offer three locations to do that. Right, we'll pick one. Oh, there's no shade there. Okay, great. Well, we've got water. We've got, you know, maybe we get my, like, a, like a shade a little bit when it comes to like a certain part of the day. So this is why we do it at this time. They don't do them at midday. These do them at two, two, three o'clock. So there's, there's provisions in place and it's still, yes, going to be somewhat, you know, I think it sort of speaks to one thing there, which is be organized in the morning to make sure that you don't have your guests waiting around for a long, long time. I've had, uh, unfortunately, I've had one couple where yeah. the bride, you know, was late 90 minutes. And it does create wow. some some tension. It does. It, I mean, I, mm. I won't lie. Mm. Like I made all the time up, you know, in the latter part, and we had a great reception. reception. She was, they were both really happy, and it was, it was all great. And you kind of forgot about it, but but it definitely does, you know, make people go, okay, we are we're dying here. <laughs> can we can we move yes. along? Yes. And so yeah, it's 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 a good point to. Have. I think what you're mostly saying at the end of the summer, all those up is have a good plan and if you have a good plan and an intent to stick to it and it's covering those bases you can't go wrong so i quite like that absolutely 
Absolutely. Speaking of things that you got to prepare, though, uh, you, you you know you 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 hear a lot of vows, right? You hear a lot of a lot of people make these speeches during their weddings. <clears throat> I do. I'm going to ask I a question because I think some people might be might be uh, um, confused by this. Are vows legally binding? Do you have to do vows during the ceremony? You have to say. I call upon the people here present to witness that I take you to be my lawfully wedded husband or wife. That's your that's legal it. vow that you have to say, right? And the celebrant has to say some legal words. Everything else in addition to that, and you know, obviously you need two witnesses over 18 who are non-intoxicated, but anything, any, everything else in the ceremony is totally optional. But I have cool. found that, you know, most of my couples are writing personal vows. If I have a couple who are sitting on the fence wondering about whether or not they should do it, I will do my best to push them off that fence because I think that really well-crafted vows can potentially become the heart of the ceremony along with the love story, you know, the beautiful storytelling element. Um, and a lot of couples are nervous about how, how can they express themselves well. But I'm an internationally published writer and I'm, I'm actually putting together my first uh, masterclass to take couples through how to write those vows, supporting them in writing those vows, making sure they're of similar weight so that both of them leave, so that neither of them leave that ceremony feeling as though they either over-delivered or under-delivered, you know? And it's people tend to think, oh, as long as we've got like the same kind of length and, you know, we're expressing our love, we're fine. I'm like, no, there's so many things to consider. You know, you mm. really, you re it really is an art, it's a craft. To be oh, okay. to absolutely. Yeah. And I can imagine, I can totally resonate with like people feeling nervous because obviously I'm seeing it on the reception side where, you know, like you have a groom, for instance, that's absolutely packing it before. Uh, I, had a, I had a groom very recently who um, <clears throat> his way of expressing uh, nerves uh, metaphysically was uh, he was <laughs> he went to the bathroom like four times before uh, the, the speeches took place, and it was it was it was well, but it came a good laugh, you know, all that kind of stuff. But but certainly, you know, it does really manifest in very physical ways, but then also obviously very subtle ways as well, uh, which is why I encourage my couples to try to do their speeches as early as possible, as opposed to later in the evening. Mm, me too. Um, yeah. Oh so, right, yeah, yes, yes. Just to just to get, you know, the, the, that, that part of the day done, particularly if they're not used to it. Of course, you know, I've had my fair share of, of, of couples, like I'm sure you have, that have been, you know, speech wizards and just love talking and that's a fantastic love thing it. too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So for, for anyone wanting to nail it, what are your hot tips? I would say definitely include expressing what you most love and, and adore about your partner. You know, really praise them. This is your time to uplift them. Mm. I would say express what you're grateful to, to them for. So this could be something that they regularly do for you. This could be their way of being. This could be, it could be anything that you just feel like, I'm just so grateful to my partner for dot, 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 whatever it is. Let them know that, you know, make them really feel appreciated and actually make some promises so this is this is quite funny actually because they are called vows right mm. but some couples when they send me their vows to review there may not be any vows in there <laughs> <laughs> they might be telling a story and it's really beautiful and they love them and you're amazing but I'm like but where are the vows like vows means promises so actually make some promises and then i hear couples who you know occasionally they'll send me th their promises and their promises could be something like promise to be really patient with you when you're watching the footy again or and I'm, mm. I, I'm like well that's okay if you want to add in a few you know if you want to pepper the promises with something like that's fine mm. but I would say don't have too much emphasis on the light of ours really let that emphasis be on on the vows that take you even a little bit out of your comfort zone where you're thinking mm. what are the commitments that I want to make to this person for the rest of our married life like what what is going to push me a little bit you know dig deep for those promises and really come up with something meaningful and sincere and promise that to them in front of everybody i think doing it in front of everybody is also so powerful and so much more deeper and more profound because it, it makes you accountable for what you say you know mm. and i would also say share a little bit 
perhaps at the end, I always think this is a nice way to sort of move into the end, but is to say to your partner, what are you excited about around your future? What, what are you looking forward to as a couple? You know, what lights you up? What are you really like? Oh my God, this is amazing, this journey we're going on. And I'm so excited about dot, dot, dot. And for some people that's, you know, living in a certain place or having kids, building a family or welcoming their family and friends into their lives and creating community. It's just what's really important for you. And so often I get sent vows where the couple just kind of finish the vows. It's that you get to the end and you're like, well, you haven't even told them that you love them, <laughs> you know? So say that you love, tell them that you love, if you love them, say you love them. Of course you mm. love them, otherwise you wouldn't be getting married to them, right? Let them know if you were really excited about becoming their husband or wife, let them know that you're so excited about becoming their husband or wife. Make them yeah. feel special. So the vows should uplift, you know, the vows should uplift your partner. It, it, it seems on face value that it would be that moment would, would <clears throat> you know, happen like that. You know, I think some people would, if they haven't been married before, obviously, don't go to a lot of weddings perhaps. They just imagine that the act, purely the act of having something to say, let's call it a vow because it's called vows, is going to be naturally, organically, already by definition, just, you know, beautiful and whatever. But actually, you know, you've got to craft it. You've got to create it. It's got to, the words have got to be placed one next to the other and they've got to have the yes. content in order to be able to provide that. And have to flow. And mm. Exactly. And of course, you know, don't worry, everyone will, whatever you say, just like when I tell my couples about their, their reception speeches, it's like, you know, whatever you say, people are going to clap. If you get up and say, thanks for coming and sit down, people are going to like, oh, that was so great. That was amazing. Like they're there for you. But in the moment, these these pure moments, particularly like the vows, you're so right that they need to be injected with more meaning. And, you know, just looking at the dic dictionary meaning of, you know, vow might even be a great start to achieve that. Yes, yes. And, and that it's not just about having written and created amazing vows. It's about then preparing for the actual day. So, you know, when I have my rehearsals with my couple, I go over this as well. I'm like, well, one of the things that I do it, when I write my couple's love story, and I write the love story for most of my couples, that those, those are the couples I attract as they want that gorgeous storytelling to be peppering their ceremony. Mm -hmm. They want it to be really personal and unique and really have their guests lean in and want to hear every word and not be sitting mm. around going oh when are the drinks coming you know <laughs> but one of the things i say to them one of the things i say to them is when i record when i've written their love story what i do is i record that story into my phone and then i put my airpods in and uh, i might be cleaning the house or you know whatever i'm doing making the bed but i'll be listening to the story that i've written so i've recorded myself I'm playing it back and I'm playing it back over and over again, at least two or three times. So that by the time I get to the ceremony, I don't just sound like I'm standing there reading the story, blah, 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 blah. But I'm actually mm -hmm. infusing it with like, sometimes I'm going to be speaking really, really fast about certain, you know, certain parts. And then at other points of your story, I'm going to be slowing it down and I'm going to be pausing and I'm going to be looking at people in the eye. And, and, you know, I'm going to be like really bringing that rhythm and that aliveness and that authenticity and that naturalness to it. And I say to them now, when you come up after I've done that and you do your vows and you just read from the book, suddenly the energy in the ceremony is going, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah so, so you have to do this too, I say to them. You, what, what I really suggest to them is that they record their vows. They put their headphones in when their partner's not around they listen to them and at the same time that they're listening to them speak them aloud as they're hearing those words speak them aloud and get used to having those words come out of your mouth and they will find that when they do that there'll be certain points in the vows that they've written where they keep stumbling same point they keep stumbling at the specific point in their vows so then they can go back to their vows and refine it and take out that word, replace it with something else, make the sentence shorter, extend that other one, whatever it is they need to do. And that's when the vows start to come together. And then on the I day, they absolutely nail it, you know, and it's gorgeous. And people go, oh, my God, your vows were amazing. And then they go, 
oh, Megs, thanks so much for all your help with that because it was not just about writing a few gorgeous things. It was crafting and the practicing and the rehearsing and then the delivering on the day. I absolutely love that. That's the, that's the drama student coming out of you 100%, but I think it's, uh, Me too. I can, res <laughs> I can resonate with that 100%. I think, uh, we're both drama students. Well, one from one, <laughs> I, I was never a drama student. Actually. I, I was funnily enough, people think I, I studied this. It's just my time on cruise ships and where I studied, I was public speaking background too, but, but I love that. Um, I love that you infuse those principles of performance into it because, and it's not, not, not a fake performance. I think it's like the other, the, the rare kind of performance in our life which actually is the most genuine raw expression of who you are it's just bringing all your best attributes out to the forefront in the most important part of your life at that point to the very person yes. that you want to commit yes. your life to i think being able to guide that in a way that isn't just reading from the phone or the the printed paper or whatever is definitely you know transforms those moments i absolutely love that we are unfortunately i could talk to you forever but we're running out of time so i just want to tail up with a couple with this season we're doing a couple of rapid fire questions so uh it's only gonna be three so don't don't stress too much but uh start with this one what is your number one trend that you're seeing this year come alive oh i would say that i'm really noticing that couples are starting to let go of having a bridal party um it feels like the bridal party you know, originally were around to help the bride and take her flowers and adjust her dress and support her before the wedding and be the person who the bride can delegate certain jobs to. And, mm. and now what I'm noticing is that brides are tending to look at a bridal party and going, actually, they're just really expensive. And um, I've got to pay for their dresses. Mm. I've got to pay for their suits and I've got to pay for their hair and their makeup. And it's a bit of hard work, actually. And I'm not really getting any support or help from them. So do I actually want to keep, be doing this? And so I'm finding that a lot of couples are, um, you know, they'll still have their team with them. They'll still have their besties come along with them and help them and enjoy certain um, experiences with them. But on the day, there's, I'm seeing a lot more that there's the two of them up there standing mm. up at the front on their own. And I feel like that is becoming a bit of a trend now. Interesting. Yeah, I think I've read, I actually mm. just read an article about that yesterday, actually. So I think uh, you're definitely on the money with that one. Second question, uh, what is one question that couples should ask you when wanting to engage with you? Interesting question. There's so many different things. I wrote a whole article on those questions to ask your celebrant. So it's about really choosing which one I would I would get them to ask me what are the ceremonies I most love doing you know what what is my passion and for me that's always going to be you know I'm going to speak into storytelling I'm going to speak into connection and meaning and depth and I'm going to speak into having the guests laughing and crying and that could be juxtapositions you know but mm. if that's and then they'll find out whether I'm for them because for the couples who just want something really plain and simple and they really just want to be married um that's not what lights me up of course i do those weddings as well i get those hmm. couples but when the couple come to me and they say yes we want you to write our love story yes we want your help with our vows yes we want you to video our ceremony because i actually video the ceremonies as well and hmm. then the next morning i send them actually that night when i get home from the ceremony i I download that recording and I send it to them. So the morning after, when they wake up in bed and they have their first coffee together in bed as a married couple, they can click on the link that I've sent them and they can watch the ceremony back, like within Love less it. than, you know, 12, 13 hours and they can download it and send it to their friends and family. So if they love all that kind of stuff and they love to have a keepsake album with their story written in it so that they can, you know, have that as this beautiful keepsake when they're old and they're arguing around who did what and they're like what is that book that megan put together for us and they put it off the shelf or or their grandkids are you know their grandkids are in bed and they go mommy daddy can you read us granny and grandpa's love story and then they pull the book that i gave them off the shelf where we've written their love story if they're a couple who are into all that sort of all those sorts of things that light me up and make me feel passionate around my work, then we're a good fit together. 
I love it. That is amazing. Um, and last question, you uh, mentioned that you do a lot of outdoor weddings, which is uh, also very similar to myself. Uh, do you prefer beach weddings or country weddings? Oh, that's a hard one for me. I grew up on a farm in Africa, so I love country, but I've chosen to live in Balmoral because I love the ocean. So I think I'm straight down the line there. I think I'm 50-50. You have a good reason to be uh, really on the fence do. with that one, I think. Yeah, I think I'll give you a pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Fair enough. <laughs> Such a gentleman. <laughs> of course. So uh, we have, we have, uh, we've definitely said it all today. What can people do if they have been entranced by, which I'm sure they have, by everything you mentioned today and would like to find out more about you? Where can they find you? They can head straight over to my website, which is sydneycelebrantservices.com. Fantastic. Um, once they get there, I'm very transparent with packages and pricing. I put everything on my website so no one has to ask me how much I charge and you know what I do. Um, and if they check out the packages and they read up about me and they like what they see, they can click a, a button that books me in for a Zoom chat, you know, straight into their calendar, straight into my calendar. Too Perfect. Easy. You make it simple, so simple. And I think that's yeah, uh, simple. Just Love simple. taking the barriers out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Megan, Absolutely. thank you so much for joining us today. You've given us a wealth of knowledge to, to, to really sit upon. And I'm sure that uh, the listeners right now are getting a, an amazing treasure trove of, of uh, tips and tricks about how to approach this ceremony. So I look forward to the next time we get to work together. And in the meantime, uh, thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Nathan. I've loved being here and it's been amazing to spend this time with you and have a gorgeous day. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Just As Planned Wedding Podcast. Please like and subscribe to let me know that you want more videos just like this one. And of course, please follow us on our socials at Just As Planned Wedding on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube for more expert insights to help your wedding go just as planned.